Acclaimed by crowds and carolled by children. We cheer you. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power. We salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving the beast of burden. A new dignity. You are giving majesty. A new face. You are giving those who long for redemption. A new song to sing. With them, with heart and voice, we shout. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the Holy Week when we remember our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin Holy Week in union with the Church throughout the world. Today Christ enters Jerusalem to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. And now I invite you, if you have a palm, to, to hold it up. God our Father, may these palms be for us signs of Jesus' kingship, reminders of his cross and symbols of his victory over sin and death. Amen. And in normal times, we would now process to all glory, Lord and honour. Um, obviously at home that's perhaps a bit hard, harder, but if you want to get up and process around your room where you're watching this, you're very welcome to do so. Let us go forth, praising Jesus, our Messiah. Redeemer King, to whom the lips 
confession. We remember the times since our last confession where we have not lived up to the way that we would want to, the way that God would want us to, and we ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, when our words and actions reflect a reluctance to confess you publicly as Lord of our lives, forgive us. When we fear that humbling ourselves would be seen by others as weakness, some kind of defect in our character, forgive us. When we have betrayed your love for us through our lack of love for you, for others and for ourselves, forgive us. The God of love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect is the prayer which summarises the theme of the day's service. Let us pray. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead going up to Jerusalem, and when he'd come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, 
Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In our reading today, we hear about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. He rides on the back of a lowly donkey, with the crowds cheering hosannas and waving branches. Branches and coats are laid out before him to give him a worthy road, a carpet for a royal procession. His simple journey is full of significance in its finer details. Here and throughout the week ahead are some of the most important disclosures of who he truly was. Riding on a lowly donkey was a prophecy made by Zechariah. In chapter 9 verse 8 he writes, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So by entering Jerusalem on a donkey, and not just any donkey, but specifically a purebred colt, as Zechariah promised, he was presenting himself as Israel's promised king, the Messiah. And there was a much earlier prophecy than this one. In the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verses 10 to 11, Jacob wrote, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. Jacob's prophecy meant that Israel's true king would come from the tribe of Judah and that in some way he would be associated with the cult of a donkey. Of course, Jesus being the descendant of David did indeed come from the tribe of Judah and he was arriving to claim his kingship on the cult of a donkey. And as Jesus reveals his kingship, what a clamour the crowd must have made on his grand entrance to the city. That would have attracted from people from the streets nearby to rush and join in with what was going on. I wonder if when we make our joyful parades around the outside of our churches this morning, the people of Badshot Lee and Hale will rush to see what all the noise is about and come and join us. On this triumphant journey, Jesus was accepted as king, victorious, the one who had come to save. The crowd were full of thanks and praise as they called out to him, Hosanna! But I'm sure you are aware that wasn't how things continued. Over the following week, Jesus suffered betrayal, humiliation, bullying, abandonment and injustice and ultimately a cruel and punishing death nailed to a wooden cross a dreadful and completely undeserved end. Today we are more fortunate than his poor disciples left standing at the cross hopelessly lost and deeply saddened by the man they had faithfully followed being so cruelly treated and ultimately dying before their very eyes. Fearful of their own lives and wondering, what next? I wonder if any of them had listened intently to what Jesus told them. He did say that this was not the end of his story. His story would go on. And of course, we are lucky enough to know that the disciples' pain would turn to joy at Christ's resurrection. Today, we know it was not the end. That on the third day, Jesus conquered death itself by rising from the grave. 
we can look forward to celebrating that joy at our Easter services next week. But I wonder if any of the disciples had a deep enough faith, that hope in an unknown future, to think beyond the present moment. Jesus' resurrection is a sign to us that there, that there, there is hope and joy to come when we are faced with adversity. In our world today, we say, see the same things as Jesus suffered. Betrayal, humiliation, bullying, abandonment and injustice. Life doesn't always go the way we would like it to. We too can be left with despair, similar to that of the disciples, as we wonder about the future. Can we have faith in the resurrection that things will get better? That our story does have hope and joy to come? I can't help but turn my eyes to the desperate situation in, in re Ukraine. My deepest respect goes out to anyone who living through that nightmare can have any kind of faith in a future of hope and joy. But that is precisely what they need to hold on to. Without that faith, surely they would face defeat and, an, uh, and a future unknown. So I will keep on praying for them to hold strong to their faith, that whether it be in this life or the life to come, they will feel hope and joy once more. Amen. Make way, make way for Christ God in His tender eyes. Fling wide the gates and welcome me into your lives. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let His kingdom be. He comes the broken heart to heal the breeze. Our prayers of intercession are a time when we pray for others, others across the world, others in our own community, others who have particularly asked for our prayers. We stand with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. 
a Christian people that through the suffering of disunity there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. For those who, weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord that we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. At the peace, we are reminded to make peace with those around us. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Lord's Prayer is the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him to teach them to pray. And it contains all that is necessary for prayer. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At the blessing, the priest pronounces God's blessing on all those present. May God, the still centre of the universe, give you peace as you watch and wait with him at the time of his passion. May God give you the joy of new life as he rises from death. May the wind and fire of the Spirit give you the power to live and act for God always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name.